Welcome back. As I mentioned earlier, what we are seeing on the border is really uh, a bit of a refugee crisis more than an immigration crisis. People from Central America, places like Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, are coming here less to find work in the United States than to escape the desperation of life at home. For instance, gang violence is so prevalent in Honduras and El Salvador that according to the United Nations, those two countries currently right now have the highest homicide rates in the world. Those two countries, highest homicide rates in the world. And you wonder why people are fleeing. NBC News Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel returned last night from a trip to El Salvador where he reported on why people are willing to risk this dangerous journey and family separation to come to the United States. And Richard joins me now from Seaside, California, where we made him stop here to get on our show. So, Richard, um, thanks very much. Let me start with this. Normally, I'm talking to you. Um, you're in a war zone somewhere. Maybe you're in Syria. Maybe you're in North Africa. Um, maybe you're somewhere in Asia. Um, but here you are. You were in Central America. What did you see? Was it? Did it feel like the war zones you cover when you covered the war? It felt in some ways very much like a war zone, like a, a low grade war zone. Uh, there are parts of San Salvador, the capital of El Salvador, where you simply can't go, where the police and government don't feel comfortable to go. Uh, we're talking about an armed population of about 100,000 active gang members. Uh, and I think when you have that many people with guns, where you have a government that doesn't feel in control of the capital city, then you're having a, a war zone dynamic. People we talked to said they're afraid to go out in the countryside. When they do, they see gang members carrying their weapons openly. There are gang checkpoints stopping you, asking you where you're from, what affiliation uh, you have, and that if they don't like your answers, they will kill you and drop you on the streets. We went to a prison and we met some very hardcore gang members and uh, one of them bragged to us that he had killed 35 people just himself. And when you have that number of dangerous people who feel that right. emboldened, uh, it is not surprising that people want to leave the country and seek different opportunities and don't want their children to get uh, sucked into the gang life and, and have them become the next generation of killers or victims. In some ways, you've spent way too much time in Syria um, uh, for us uh, at NBC. Compare the sort of in El Salvador, how much of that country are they actually governing and how much of it is the gangs that are, gov uh, that are in charge of this? I mean, and, and, and is it similar to how a Syria was where you sort of only had parts of the country um, governed by certain entities? Well, uh, not just the 100,000 people who, or so who are active gang members. There are some estimates that you have to multiply that number by five or ten to get the real number of people who are actually affiliated with gangs, supported with gangs, make their livelihood with gangs. And this is a small country, El Salvador. We're only talking about six and a half million people. So that is roughly one in ten people there yeah. is either a gang member or right. makes their livelihood from a gang member. So we're talking about 10 percent of the population, just of the population, living outside the law. And this is a population that is armed, so they are able to control, exert their will over a lot more of a percentage than that. So there, there are large parts of the country that are not fully under the government's control. Uh, now, I, I'm curious, you spent a lot of time on the front lines covering the migrant crisis from North Africa into Southern Europe. Um, give me some uh, similarities, differences between what you witnessed with this migrant crisis coming up from Central America. So you were talking to a lot of your guests earlier. Is this a refugee crisis from Central America or a migrant crisis? Usually, when I've seen them, they're always mixed together. You have people fleeing from war zones. You have people who are actively afraid for their lives and also people who are afraid for their lives and want more economic opportunities. Uh, but what I haven't seen before is this family separation. Uh, I, as I was there in, 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 in Central America, watching the people try to leave, watching them be deported back home, I remembered covering this massive uh, migration crisis that was in Europe a few, a few years ago. And we, we saw lots and lots of refugees, lots and lots of migrants, but we didn't see authorities deliberately separating people from families. They didn't see it as necessary. They didn't see it as productive. I was in Hungary. And Hungary has one of the most aggressive, hardline anti-immigration policies. We saw people coming into to Hungary. And I remember this one, in, in, one moment, and it seared in my brain. I was watching people loaded onto a bus by Hungarian authorities. They were on the bus. And suddenly, the people on the bus started becoming hysterical. They were shouting. Uh, they were under guard, but they were very agitated. What had happened is one of the family members on the bus had gotten separated from their child. Yeah. So everyone on the bus started to scream. 
The bus stopped. They opened the windows. People on the ground lowered, uh, raised the, the, the child, raised the baby onto the bus so, there could, so the family could stay together and the family drove off. So, and, and the bus drove off. So right. even in Hungary, which has one of the most right-wing anti-immigration governments in the world right now, they were stopping the buses, making sure that people could right. be united with their families because they didn't right. want to inflict even more trauma onto the people so they, right. they could control the situation and not cause unnecessary agitation and, and stress. All right, Richard Engel, um, you've seen quite a bit this in your travels around the world. Richard, uh, thanks very much for your reporting. Much appreciated. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.